Oh, yeah. first. Hi, you. Where's it? This is we're on the same progressive here. We're doing a live feed. Yeah. Hello. Do you have anything you'd like to say to the audience, to the people? Uh, Talk oh, to the people. I wasn't thinking of anything. Um, He's tired. <laughs> my mind's scattered. Um, That's all right. No, but I'm also. I loved your. Um, I loved your um, coverage of the DNC. Uh, Thank you. you did there. Thank you. Uh, Want to oh. tell the audience uh, to look left. Look left, look libertarian, um, and go beyond the normal boundaries of what you consider to be possible. Yes, break out of the, 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 the propagandized, brainwashing narratives that is keeping us confined to a system that's failed. Right. I'm, it's ju failed. I'm just thinking, I'm just um, scatterbrained because I was thinking about our platform. I was reading the instructions of like commenting and uh, pretty much that there are some things that aren't being addressed because yeah, I... I I'm a delegate, and I was asking um, people at home who aren't Greens, like, you know, what would you like me to carry over? And I got a, got a smattering of different things. Like one friend of mine just said free speech. Don't know what that means. Um, but uh, some said, um, like, my roommate is on the autistic spectrum, and that's something that we should have. And especially lately with the uh, chills of anti-vaxxer and, and that kind of smearing. There is so much dialogue that is not, you know, the There's media all, yeah. does not expand or inform or get people to think. They no, just, no. They just get these talking points, and there are so many important conversations. So it's just that tons to of misinformation, had. even about what we're not talking about. Yes. So there's many layers. Uh, and nuances that we can come to if we start talking honestly. Um, so I took the train here from New York. Oh, that must uh, have been a long journey, It was two sir. days. Long journey. But I enjoyed it. I like not going through the security state of the airport, and I like meeting people on the train, which was possible. I got to leave my seat and talk to the Greens that got on in Chicago. It was very nice. So what, what, how, how are you perceiving the, conception, uh, the, the, uh, mm. the uh, convention so far? Well, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I've been to a few conventions before, and this one is just as good as the other ones. Meeting new people, meeting people who are like-minded. Uh, if you ever feel alone, you should get find the nearest convention. I mean, n nerds and geeks do it with comics and stuff. You know, they go to a convention. I know. Suddenly, this is this is like yes. <laughs> uh, the same is true with politics. And in fact, if you're feeling alone or lost, and consumption doesn't seem to do it. Uh, for you, or it's, it doesn't seem enough, you know, go look into politics. You know, politics needs to be cool again, because uh, a, being a political... We're, I did, we're not cool? I thought we were cool. Oh, no. We are cool. I thought, I, I thought we're we were the coolest. Cool. We're not the coolest. Oh. It's absolutely cool. <laughs> but um, it's just, see, I'm in Albany, where uh, it's always been a... You're in Albany? Albany, New York. You're like 45 minutes away from me. I'm in Adams, Massachusetts. I'm in the Berkshires. Oh, really? Yeah. That's where you are? Yes. Yeah. I'm a mill rat's daughter. Yeah, we're really close. So uh, so in Albany, it's a one-party town. So it's always been very uh, hopeless when it comes to affecting political change. Like, if I would ever go door-knocking, people are, even when talking about third possibilities of being third-party, the possibilities of outsider politics, there's still a kind of, eh, there's nothing we can do on our own, or... And, and, you know, and I, I just came from a talk, um, and there were some good workshops. You know, Left Forum in New York City had a lot more, but there were some good workshops here. And one was about the money supply, that the money supply is privately controlled. Yes, and so, Federal and Reserve. So, That's something everybody the, should learn about. But under the Constitution, we have the ability to create our own money. Uh, rather, the, uh, the U.S. government can. And... So, and usually when it comes to U.S. policy, we've done one of three things. Uh, repatriate, um, say, the National Bank, mm -hmm. right, the Fed, uh, like Jackson in the 19th century did or whatever. Then there's the stomping of private money creation. And then the third thing is then the public, uh, or rather the, the government, making money. Yes. Usually throughout world history, governments have done one of these things. But you need to do all three. Because if you just do one, like say, if you just create public money and for public works, mm -hmm. you make a lot of debt that then private banks then control. If you just renationalize and create a national bank like England has, or uh, state, state banks, 
you still leave money creation in the hands of private institutions and they will still control the flow of jobs, resources, and so on. And if you just do that middle thing I mentioned, the um, ending private money creation, but don't create public money, then you create a depression. Yeah, so